I've been focusing mostly on guitar in film music and media music, uh, even media or other kind of more than films, uh, like video games or stuff like that. I'm focusing especially on guitar or many different uses and functions of the guitar in the media music world. Um, someone is, <laughs> that's not you, uh, don't be shy. Uh, any of you want to say why it could be important to think a little bit more or deeper uh, into what guitar can do for film music. Yeah. Oh, uh, you need to answer the question? Yeah, you, uh, do, uh, do, you, uh, do you have any good reason to, to be here and talk about guitar and film music? What, what do you think is uh, the most important thing that guitar can bring to a film school? Well, guitar is like piano, it's, it's a really strong element of that's strange. And, you know, it can play super low, super high, and super crisp. And I think the, the waveform of the guitar is like one of the, the top resonant, uh, beautiful sounding, like human, humane, human, like, I don't know how to explain I love it. this, I love this point of view. And it has all kinds because of Because it's a reach of our harmo harmonics, right? Yeah, it's you can so do it electronic, you can do uh, like acoustic and mix it with all kinds of stuff. Okay, you touched a few of the points that I'm gonna touch and go a little deeper today. Thank you for your answer. Yeah, guitar has a um, very interesting feature as an instrument. And, and can be used in many different ways. This is something I want you to think about because uh, each guitar player, and this does not just apply for to guitar, eh? I, I think that every instrument can find ways to apply what I'm about to say for the instrument. So I don't want to be people who don't play guitar. Hi. Uh, so, um, yeah, guitar has very interesting harmonic features. It has this beautiful dynamic range. So dynamic range and these sound features and versatility uh, can really make something, uh, make, make it a very interesting choice in a film score. I'm gonna play a few film scores that feature guitar, some very classic movies, but also something more contemporary in order to just give you ideas of how many ways uh, guitar can be used in a film score. But before that, I want to um, underline the function of guitar in a film score because you know when you do a film score uh, when you create music for a film the music might have very different functions and uh, I, I want to say that in a very ideal world uh, an ideal film I mean every every film uh, has its own grammar so every film, in, in every film, uh, uh, music can play a different role or a different character. So um, a film score is something that really belongs to that unique product, to that unique work, which is a film. Sometimes you have film with no music and they really work well, they don't need music. Sometimes music in a film can really enhance what's already in the film, and sometimes films uh, needs some very uh, uh, inconsistent music in order to create that kind of separation and that kind of um, uh, contrast. Contrast, yeah, I was looking for that word, thank you. That kind of contrast to create even uh, um, an even deeper meaning. So, music can do a lot of stuff, and with guitar. We can go even further with that because guitar is usually associated uh, as an icon, as an, an iconic sound associated with some cultural or geographical or historical um, settings. So one of the functions of guitar in film scoring, in film scoring or in film music, um, <coughs> is what I call cultural, geographical, or historical setting. Um, we can make a lot of example of film settled. This, this is really obvious, but when a film wants to communicate easily that it's settled in Spain, you hear guitars. 
there's a, I, I, this name will come up a few times today, Woody Allen movies. <laughs> you know Woody Allen? Yes. Did you watch all Woody Allen movies? That's bad, you have to watch all of them. I'm joking. I, at least one, I, I'll tell you later, but there's at least one thing you should watch from Woody Allen works. Uh, this film is called Vicky Cristina Barcelona, and there's a lot of guitar music, like classical Spanish music from Albanese, Tafrega, these guys. So uh, it's it's an easy way to communicate. Uh, that's the, the setting of the film, the, the period in which the film is settled, or simply the geographical place. It just it just sounds like Spain. Same thing for Southern America. Uh, we were mentioning that film called Dallas Buyers Club. Uh, I was lucky enough to compose a, a kind of music called mariachi, which is a Mexican style of music, traditional Mexican style of music. I wrote a guitar mariachi, and that mariachi was used in that Oscar winner movie uh, to uh, clearly communicate that that scene was happening in Mexico because the main character, the lead character of the movie was traveling between the US and Mexico, smuggling medicines, smuggling drugs, not drugs, medicines actually, which were not allowed, were, were not legal in, in the US. Uh, it's a nice movie, by the way, <laughs> not because of me. Um, the emotional quality of guitar also has a role in its, um, uh, its participation in film scoring because a lot of people, when they hear guitar, the, this is another iconic meaning and uh, or iconic feature of our instrument. Uh, think about romantic, romanticism. I mean, guitar immediately makes you feel romantic, probably because it's the instrument used in serenades <laughs> or other very romantic situation. It's a uh, it's a very personal instrument. It has a it comes from popular tradition, it's not like piano, which is something that was born inside the classical music tradition that comes from other instruments that were really, really uh, embodied in the classical tradition. Guitar is something that developed from uh, Arab people who went through Spain and uh, basically um, transformed this early guitar called uh, Al Oud, which means uh, wood into the way line than uh, the guitar as we know today. I mean, I'm, I'm making a long story short, but more or less that's the origin of guitar. Am I saying something wrong? <laughs> I'm on <all> board. <laughs> so just correct me if I'm wrong about something like that, but I'm not going to get deep into the history of guitar. Um, but this is the reason why uh, guitar is considered um, a, a romantic history, because it has this emotional feature that comes from the Mediterranean uh, root of this instrument. This is clear, is that clear? Okay, I want to point out a few things. Before we move forward, there's a board here. Um, before we move forward, um, I want to uh, explain a, a very simple um, thing about what, what's, what kind of music we hear in films or other media. We basically have uh, in a film or in a TV show or in a video game or uh, any kind of media that requires music, we have two kinds of music that comes from two different sources. We can divide this stuff into what we usually call soundtrack. Now let's play the And the other source is called film score or simply score. Does anybody know the difference between these two sources of music in films? Go ahead and... No, no, I get you, if someone else wants to. I, I love your eloquence, by the way, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, say, you, you, you can speak. You're the only one. Oh. So, uh, to my knowledge, the film score is uh, uh, when a composer writes the music, and a soundtrack is when uh, and a sound engineer uh, turn the 
what the composer is intending to put out into a, a wave output, like uh, like like instrument orchestrations and uh, stuff. Like it turns into the audio of what is being uh, composed. Okay, I see what you mean. You're close. <laughs> to what I was about to say, but thank you. Actually, what were the process of bringing the film score into audio files that gets that gets implemented in the film or in the media? It's still part of the film scoring process. That's still part of the film score. What we call soundtrack, and that's why it's important for me to mark this difference. What we call soundtrack is music that is used in the film that's not been composed specifically for that utilization. Is that clear? It can be music that was composed years before or music that's even new but was not composed for that particular media, not composed on scene. It was probably uh, composed for other reasons or it's just songs that the director or the movie like or there are many other reasons why uh, is in the music we hear in media is not just the score composed for that specific media. There are many reasons why there are other stuff, other musical objects we can call that in, a, in, in, in the film music that we hear. Uh, so these are two very different entities, okay? And there are two, there are two very different processes to get to work in either one or the other um, field of the, of the film music, okay? So these don't have any intersection. And there's another difference that I want you to know about, which is the difference between diegetic music and extra diegetic music. I'm sure you heard this term, you know what, what this difference, right? Diegetic means, okay, I'll explain, no problem. It's, I'm happy to tell you something that you probably didn't know then. Uh, diegetic means that belongs to the narration, to the narrative process. So all diegetic music, we call it diegetic because we see in the movie or in the media that we are watching or that we are experiencing, we see the source of that music. So if in a film someone is playing a turntable with some music, that's diegetic music. If in a film someone plays an instrument, that's diegetic music. If there's a DJ playing some music, that's diegetic music. The, the only uh, thing is that we have to know, we have to see, and it's be, it, it has to be part of the narration, the source of that music. Is that clear? This is diegetic music. As opposite, to diegetic music, we have extra diegetic music, okay? Which is music which is music that uh, belongs to the media but it's not played somewhere. You hear drums sounding like big drums sounding in a war scene, but you don't see anyone playing these drums, or you hear heavy synthesizers in and um, in a spaceship, and you don't see this synthesizer. That's extra danger. Okay. What do you think? Uh, can you say just intuitively uh, where the film score belongs? If it's more diegetic or more extra diegetic, or the soundtrack? The film score is probably more diegetic. The film score is more diegetic. Anyone? Disagree on that? I do. Yeah. <laughs> I disagree. Yeah. It's, like a... it's okay, it's okay, don't worry, we're not judging you. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Give me an example. <laughs> yeah, give me an example. There are examples of diegetic film scores. Can someone come up with an example of diegetic film score? It's a huge one. It's an Oscar winner movie. So there is actually an intersection between diegetic and film score. It could be, it could exist, and it's also exists a diegetic um, intersection with soundtrack. So we can create this kind of diagram where they intersect somewhere. I'll make an example. Moon River by Harry Martini. Okay. 
she plays, Audrey Hepburn plays Moon River with a guitar on the window, very romantic scene. Breakfast at Tiffany. Well, yeah, in Breakfast at Tiffany. Mm -hmm. uh, the film is always the wonderful. I don't think they know it. It's not that No, no, I know. There's a, there's a, more, there's a more recent one, like, uh, it's called Birdman by Alejandro Gonzalez in Arrigo. Have you watched this movie? It's very interesting. I really love that movie, and I love everything this guy did. But this movie is really interesting. And the soundtrack was mostly created just by one drummer playing drums. It's called Antonio Sanchez. Great, excellent jazz drummer. And he plays in the movie. Well, sometimes the main character goes through some corridors, and you hear the soundtrack, and he stumbles into this guy playing drums in the corridor. So it's very interesting. He plays with this concept of diegetic and extra di diegetic, of course. But it, it, we can consider these two films an intersection between the film score and the diegetic field of music. The most of the scores that we hear, by the way, are extra diegetic. For example, every Morricone score is extra diegetic. Okay? It's uh, every Hans Zimmer score in Christopher Nolan films, you hear Hans Zimmer and you don't see anything happening on a musical, you just see beautiful <laughs> uh, narration, like extra, um, extra reality narration in that film that is enhanced by those uh, elements, musical elements, but there's nothing diegetic about that. So the norm with film score is this, is the extra di diegetic stuff. There are also intersections between diegetic and soundtrack and extra diegetic and soundtrack. If someone comes up with idea, if not, I will just be quick and tell you examples. For example, um, there are soundtrack which are songs that are in the movie that were not written for the movies that still are live played in the movies. For example, there's an interesting one, uh, a film by director Wes Anderson. You know this director? Yeah. Interesting director. He made a film called The Life Aquatic of Steve Zissou. Funny movie, very funny movie. And there's someone there playing David Bowie's music with guitar, with classical guitar, in a kind of Brazilian style. He's a Brazilian songwriter who plays just David Bowie's covers, music, beautifully, uh, and he plays within the movie, you see him singing and playing guitar in this film. It's very interesting, very fun in the movie. I, so this would be a nice intersection between these two. <coughs> um, there are also, most of the soundtrack are also extra diegetic. If you hear music in a TV show, it's usually extra diegetic. When you hear songs, that to be sure they're usually uh, extra diegetic. You rarely see someone, a band playing uh, a funny song in a TV show when the TV show um, is showing other things. So again, this is another norm that usually soundtrack up also extra diegetic. There is some interesting, very interesting intersection between diegetic and extra diegetic. And that's where Woody Allen comes up again. Because uh, um, there's a very famous film uh, called, what's the name? Uh, you Meet a tall, tall and Dark Stranger. I can't believe you didn't watch this movie, by the way. Uh, it's a Woody Allen movie from like 12, 15 years ago, something like that, uh, where you hear a guitar playing, which is part of the narration, because he hears guitar from the neighbors, right? Uh, uh, there's uh, this guitar playing uh, a Boccherini play, uh, piece, and but later the same track, the same guitar track, is played in an extra diegetic way in the same film. And we can say something like that also for Breakfast at Tiffany because the song Moon River plays in a diegetic way in the film, but it's also an extra. It also has some extra diegetic uses in the film, because it plays in different orchestrations in other uh, moments of the movie without seeing anyone playing it or singing it. So that could be an intersection between diegetic and extra diegetic. There are also directors 
who like to play with this concept. Uh, for example, uh, a German director called Wim Wenders uh, used to play with this difference and uh, they, uh, there are two characters who are talking and there's music and one of them, you feel, okay, it's extra energetic music, this is just the soundtrack and at some point they say, oh, you should turn down the volume and then the frame becomes larger and larger and you see they are, beside of them there are two big speakers so they turn up, turn down the volume. It's something they can. It's something you can play around if you're a good filmmaker. Is anyone here into filmmaking? No. Yeah, you are. Oh, okay, I love that. Exactly. Get you into should talk to Italy. It's a festival. Yeah, you should. You should send them information. Yeah. yeah That's the place for you, unless you have other plans. It's in July. Okay. By the way, I mentioned this movie because and you have to watch it because that guitar piece by McCain was played played by your teacher, Tali, so you should, <laughs> you should, uh, you have many reasons to watch. And uh, I had about six days to do a solo version, a quartet version, and arrange for another one of it yesterday, because yeah. the film was already shot. The, the, the actors, they probably know the name, Frida Pinto, Frida Pinto. she played, they know Frida Pinto from okay. the monkeys, from the, from the uh, what is it, the apes? Just, yes, like so that's the after association, yeah. And by the way, I just want to say about that film, you, you said about, she was playing a solo version, yeah. and he used a quintet version of the, the same piece. In, the, in a different In a different, place like, as a part of the plot, so he did something kind of unusual. Yeah. Also. Yeah, Watch the movie. Is everything clear yeah, about the movie? You'll meet a tall, dark stranger. You will meet, meet a tall, dark stranger. Yeah. It's a nice film. I, mean, I love Alan everything Ten. by Woody Allen, but that one uh, is a very good one. And by the way, guitar players, a lot of Woody Allen films feature guitar soundtracks. Um, and there are, uh, for example, the, the other one I mentioned is called Vicky Cristina Barcelona, a lot of Spanish music because it's settled in Spain. And there's another one about guitar players. He, he created, he made a movie about a fictional guitar player who was uh, in the gypsy jazz um, field. Uh, and it's, it's a nice movie, very, very funny movie uh, with uh, Sean Penn, I think it's Sean Penn. Uh, I don't remember the English uh, title, I remember the title, the Italian version of the title, do you remember it? I don't remember the title. I okay, by the way, it's, it's in the Woody Allen filmography, quite easily, and it's all it's both diegetic and extra diegetic, a lot of jazz, gypsy jazz guitar. Do you know gypsy jazz as a style of music? Sweet and low down. Oh, why do you know that? Sweet and low down, I love that title. Beautiful film. Um, so you never heard about gypsy jazz guitar? Or also called... Uh, they heard about Gypsy King. Yeah. No? Gypsy, gypsy no. Kings, yeah, but it's, okay. it's more... Uh, it's a tradition of jazz uh, whose, whose main, um, the main exponent of this tradition is Django Reynard. Have you heard about this yeah. guitar player? Django Reynard, okay. You can feel free to check it out if you like jazz or if you want to know more. It's also called Manouche Jazz. Manouche is the French word for um, gypsy, basically. It's not intended in a, uh, in a bad way. It's just a style of gypsy people that uh, use the gypsy traditions like violin or guitar in the jazz uh, style of music with swing. They create something really beautiful and this guitar player, John Gurena, was really amazing. He was a magician of guitar and he lost two fingers because he was living in a trailer with his family and there was a big fire there. He lost two fingers and he kept playing it in unbelievable right. way with just the other two fingers of his left hand. Unbelievable what he can do. I mean, even the challenging even for people with four fingers. Can you imagine for him? Okay, uh, we can move forward and play a few soundtracks with uh, that feature guitar. This is really classical. Uh, did you know that Forbidden, did you know the this, this song Forbidden in Prime? It's a, it's a very, very famous classical guitar piece. <laughs> I never saw that. Really? I have to see the movie. 
it, it's a very, very sad movie. Oh, really? uh, but it's a, it's a beautiful movie, and uh, it's a very, very fa famous piece for guitar that's been made famous by the movie. It's uh, it's an anonymous piece. We don't really know who's the who's the anonymous. writer. It's it's considered a traditional piece of music. Anonymous, yeah. Yep. Um, mm, another very interesting example of classical guitar. Now I'm focusing on classical <coughs> guitar, but there's also a lot of uh, different kind of guitars and uses of guitars <coughs> and of music. Just want to make sure that you have many ideas to bring home about what guitar can do in the music. Uh, this is a very famous cavatina. It's called this piece of music. We have that chorus course, but then have to leave. Okay. Do you know this piece of music? It's played by John Williams, the guitar player. John Williams, not the composer. This is really romantic, really this this kind of sadness and nostalgia and death. So it's it's really a good way to think about guitar in films that doesn't have to lead to Spain or to uh, any other geographical place because this, the film is clearly not settled in Spain. Stanley Meyers. Stanley Meyers. Yeah, the writer is Stanley Meyers, and it's been uh, I think also arranged for guitar, but. For sure, it's the, this version is played by John Williams. Yeah. It's called Cavatina. You know what a Cavatina is as a music form? It's, it's called Cavata means uh, extract. It's a little extract because uh, they used to extract these little melodies from bigger works like mm -hmm. operas, etc. So a Cavatina is a small portion of this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a short know. Yeah. What? I didn't know. Oh, right. That's what Cavatina means. Um, this is really interesting. <laughs> I'm joking, this is Ali playing. Uh, Digital effects on guitar, and I 
I can play you, did I want to play you this piece of music from this film called Bones and Gold. It was an Oscar nominated movie mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, probably. I didn't watch the movie. Uh, it's a kind of controversial movie. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's not the kind of movie I would watch. I would probably do at some point, but I still didn't. I didn't watch it yet. We <laughs> very different style of music, uh, was very popular in the 90s, and um, we had someone who had a, a totally different experience of the music making process, who was never composing. Also chorus, but another chorus, and yeah. then I didn't feel like it was one. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So this is a, a, a totally different approach to music, but still you can use guitar such a creative and such a meaningful ways. It just starts with a few guitar notes. And they are not even played with a um, classical pizzicato or a classical fingering style. It's probably a pick on a mm. classical guitar. It's, it's very um, rough attack, you know, mm -hmm. but still it creates an interesting texture, in my opinion. So um, I'll come back later on this topic but this is something I want you all to consider if you are getting into film music or use guitar in film music. Be creative, just don't get boxed in what you learn uh, as classical guitar guitarist. You can be really creative with guitar. I'll give you a few tips later to experiment, uh, but this is something that I want you to consider seriously. Then uh, there are other classic ways to use guitar in film music, and one of the most famous, I'm gonna play just a very short piece of this because this is so. I was working with the John Barry Seven, which was a group, and we did the, uh, the music film, this is music the film Beat Go, which, which you so charmingly mentioned. And Shirley Bass, and, that, and, and it's, it's a, what they call an F-hole acoustic cello no, with, a, with a diamond and pickup on it, which I think gave it, I don't know, what do you think from hearing it here, he's not exactly uh, the same. This is the interview, the, this game that was playing was the guitar player that played the original version of, of this uh, theme, which is the James Bond theme. You know it, right? You know, just playing a few seconds of it just to make sure we're on the same <laughs> Composer John Barry. I thought it's synthesizer. What do you mean? 
Well, I was sure it's synthesized. I didn't know it's from the top. It's, it's, uh, it's, it was that guy. So yeah, yeah. It's, well, uh, I'm not a rocker. As you can see, I'm not a rocker. <laughs> Uh, basically, that guitar sound, it's universally known as the twang, because mm -hmm. it's an onomatopoeic mm -hmm. word. It's I thought you could create it on synthesizer, can you? No, 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 it's, it's actually, in the, in the, I think it was invented in the 60s, mm -hmm. even 50s, because the, the guy who we actually, we, uh, we believe he invented this sound, it was, it was, it happened in the 50s, it's called Dwayne, I don't remember his name, but uh, there's a whole history about the twang sound for guitar, and there are, okay, here is the twang, there's an article, if you want this article, it's on the New York Times magazine, and uh, no, there, I don't want it. there's an article about the, the twang thang, it's called, and it explains very, in, in very, very de in, in details, the history of that sound, who invented it, why it became so popular in the 60s. Basically, all the music that we call surf rock or surf music used that guitar sound, especially in California, like Beach Boys used that sound. Like, do you know Beach Boys? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it, it became very popular in film music because of this. <coughs> this is another great way to use guitar. <laughs> Such a genius. He used also other instruments in very iconic and different ways. If you hear the soundtrack for Mission, uh, he used the oboe in a very distinctive and unique way. So I encourage you to listen to this or other um, film music by Enemy Recorder. The way he used solo instruments is really peculiar, it's, it's really a meaningful way and creative way to approach uh, instrumental writing. This is an important stuff I wanted. You can do the same with the, whatever instrument you play, and this is a very creative way to approach your instrument in film music. Um, there's another interesting uh, use, uh, more contemporary use of twang guitar. Yeah, the um. This movie is by a very famous uh, director called Jim Jarmusch. And in this uh, film, the soundtrack is only guitar, just electric guitar, by a very famous songwriter called Neil Young. But he doesn't sing in this song, he just plays guitar. He probably improvised that watching the movie. It's such a strange and fascinating, charming movie with Johnny Depp. It's called Dead Man. Mm. It's a beautiful movie, I love it. My father is talking to help people. And a young elk came in upon me. They were English soldiers. I cut them with my knife. But they hit me on the head with a rifle. All went black. My spirit seemed to leave me. I was then taken east. In a cage. I was taken to Toronto. Then Philadelphia. Okay, I encourage you to watch the movie and listen to the guitar, how beautifully this simple guitar pentatonics, it's really easy you study, uh, if you study <laughs> uh, harmony uh, music theory with Eric, you know what pentatonic skill is, it's basically just 
pentatonic scales, very, very uh, played in a very wise way, with a very, very good taste. And um, last but not least, I just want to mention these other composer. Federico, yeah. some of them I'm sure have to leave at six exactly. Okay. Do you want to play for them? Because I'm sure everyone wants to if hear they, it. If they want. I want to. Okay, oh, so before <laughs> playing, I want to tell you a few things about what you can do uh, if you want to proceed a career in film scoring, both as a guitar player or as a guitar player and composer, which means composing film music with guitar. This is something I really encourage to do because that's the way I started. Uh, I started basically composing music for silent films, like old silent films, just with my guitar. I got some prizes just doing that because uh, I basically composed music on a, a film that had no music and had no dialogue, so it was all music, all me, playing by myself. And I did it even as a performance, as a live performance to screen the movie and play guitar live with my sound. But this is something you can always do, There's a, the internet is flooded, the YouTube is flooded with silent movies. I really encourage you to experiment with this. And uh, what I say here, there are a few th tips that I want to share with you, which is, first of all, learn music theory, and you have your maestro here, so I guess you, you, you're doing your job. I also say, ignore music theory. Sometimes I just want you, if you learned it, just for, sometimes you forget about music theory because there's always a, a way to reconnect what you do in a mu in a theory theoric theoretical frame after you do it. But to, when you compose, just be free, be a little anarchic with rules, and just try to think out of the box, even about in the theory or the harmony that you know. Uh, I encourage everyone to explore all kinds of music, especially the one you love. If you love jazz, just explore jazz. Try to learn jazz harmony or jazz phrasing or what swing means of playing in a swing way or the way uh, jazz players use chords, the voicings they use. This is something that might be useful for you, but if you love country music, there's a lot of space for country music in films because a lot of films that are settled in the um, in, in the US, they need country music for the same reasons why Spanish films need guitars. So country music is mostly based on banjo and guitars. Um, I say improvise daily. I teach also improvisation. Tali knows that she invited me to the improvisation seminar in her festival in Italy. Uh, I encourage you to improvise daily. This is not a class about improvisation. I want to play something before leaving, so I'm not going to go deep into that. But I really encourage you to do a daily 10 minutes free improvisation with whatever you want, with simple ideas, with or without metronome, with or without film or images moving in front of you. Just get some inspiration and do that, do that daily. That's great, great help for your creativity. Write songs. If you like songs, you listen to songs to the radio, write songs because that's a good way to be in a soundtrack. If you write a great songs, you have a great opportunity to be featured in a film as a soundtrack composer, not as a film score composer. Um, experiment with your instrument. Use a different tuning than regular guitar tuning. Use weird tuning that you never think, would never think about. Uh, use prepared guitar, put some stuff in your guitar on the strings, put uh, a sponge on uh, between the strings and uh, the body of the guitar, experiment with noise with your instrument, uh, and if you want, use digital effects. I mean, I encourage everyone, by the way, to have studio experience. Go in studios and record as a professional, record with a click, without a click, with metrum or without a metrum, just get as much ex studio experience as you can, either working for other composers or for your own compositions. This is something very important if you want to make a career. Just be effective and productive 
in the studio time because the studio time is expensive and you must be really effective. Uh, find inspiration in other forms of art. Okay, read a lot. Uh, go to museums. Go to watch contemporary works of art. Uh, for example, collage. You know what a collage is? Yeah. What could be a music collage with guitar? I don't know. This is just something that can, came up in this moment to me. If you want to try to experiment and create a musical collage, I don't know what that would mean. How would we translate those concepts into uh, our art? But this is something that I encourage you to do because it's already a creative challenge to translate something from other forms of art. Cooperate with other musicians and artists. Okay, this is also very um, important as creative. Just collaborate as much as possible with other composers or write songs with other artists or do whatever you want, play together, create some experiment like improvise together. Okay. Is everything clear? Do you have any question? Hope that's been useful to you, how to make a composition of mine. This was not <coughs> originally was not meant to be part of any film score. I just wrote it because uh, I was studying I was trying to um, experiment with legatos, <laughs> with uh, hammer on. How do you call it? Legato? Yeah? You want to record? Ah, I'm recording. Mm -hmm. So I wrote this kind of study about legatos, which is, I call it just prelude, but it's more like a study about legato. 